Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with a massive improvement to one of my main decks in Clash Royale. I love playing Golem, but it just doesn't work in the meta with Inferno Towers, Fisherman, and Giant Skeletons everywhere. Specifically, when you build up a big push, the Giant Skeleton will give you giant disappointment. If you stack up too much stuff, the bomb will just explode everything, giving your opponent way too much value. Usually, Golem decks use lightning to break through buildings so your Golem can actually connect to towers, Elixir Collector to gain an Elixir advantage, or Mega Minion for added air defense. But if you can't beat them, you gotta join them, and that's exactly what Golem did. There's a top 200 ladder player using Giant Skeleton at over 7,500 trophies. Usually when opponents see a giant skeleton plus lumberjack, they're expecting a balloon or graveyard deck. So they'll cycle their fishermen, their buildings, and a lot of their ground defenses. When opponents don't have the right cards in hand for the golem, your push will get out of hand. Imagine trying to defend a golem without your building or fisherman. It just doesn't work. Golem goes directly towards the tower. The lumberjack rages up the giant skeleton. The double dragons remove all of the distraction cards. And then the cannon card or giant skeleton find their way to tower, winning you the game. We've joined the dark side with giant skeleton golem. So let's go jump straight some games and assert dominance. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. A huge thanks to everyone that's using Create a Code Tag, making high effort videos like this one possible. Let's try to push up as far as we can today. All right, let's get it. So all we want to do is get the double elixir with this deck so we can stack up giant skeletons, have them get raged up, and then make our opponents furious. So I can go for a giant skeleton in the back if he cycles anything in the back that's big. Otherwise, I kind of want to just wait until double. He's going to go for a minor in the safe spot. If he dropped it in the back, I would have tornadoed it towards my king tower. But, you know, most people are not going to give you that luxury. They're always going to be like, hey, people have tornadoes. So I'm running minor, no king tower activation. This is one of the most defensive decks in the game. This is going to be hilarious. I think this is minor rocket baby Nate's deck. And if that's the case, if the inferno tower expires... And he thinks that I have a giant skeleton deck only. I can maybe go in for a golem and ruin his entire day. So I'm going to be planning on going for a golem right now. Waiting for the Inferno Tower to expire. <laughs> and I want to see the look on his face right now. He's definitely not very happy. Because without Inferno Tower, how is he expecting to defend this? He'll cycle Dark Prince and he's probably going to get back to an Inferno Tower like last second or something, right? Or is he going to... I don't know. He's No, he, he can't. He's not even able to. He's just going Royal Delivery Dark Prince. This, this might just win me the game. People don't know what your deck is when you have Golem with Giant Skeleton. They look at it and they're like, oh, Giant Skeleton Piggies. Okay, I can shut that down with Dark Prince and Royal Delivery. Not the case, bro. Not the case. That was a big Golem in your face. Okay, so we know that we're up a lot. I could still lose this matchup because it's not good for me to play against someone that has Rocket and Furnace Tower and all of these great cards that are super obnoxious in the late game. In Single Elixir, it's harder for him to afford everything like you saw with the Inferno Tower, so maybe I can get more value there. Okay, so we're going to catch the Miner, make sure that he doesn't do any damage with that. He's going to have to log or drop Skeletons here. So I'm considering going in for the Bar Barrel, but I don't think that's the right play. I'd rather go for an Electro Dragon here. That was a great Electro Spirit. I should have went for the Bar Barrel. Maybe he's going to rocket on this. If the Electro Dragon chains onto the tower, he might just lose the game. <laughs> this is pretty funny. I love that the Electro Dragon gave us a little bit of sizzle value. Okay, so the good thing about this is he has to rocket me. That's the only way that he can get damage. We can go for a Barbarian Barrel Prediction on top of his Inferno Tower too. I'm going to Miner counter with a Lumberjack, I guess. Um, I gotta go for a Barbarian Barrel as well, otherwise the Skeletons are gonna do damage. That was a really well-played Skeletons, but the Barbarian Barrel is gonna tank for the... Ah, uh, no. I wish it did. <laughs> I had dreams and memes, my dudes. We're gonna Baby Dragon off to the side because it's way harder for him to defend that. Always Baby Dragon off to the side so then maybe it goes and bypasses the Inferno Tower. If you guys don't know, now you do know. I'm hoping that the Inferno Tower pops so then we can go for a Giant Skeleton here and then just break through. I can Tornado and kill the Inferno Tower 100%. So I'm gonna go and do that when I need to. Yeah, I'm gonna do it now. So it dies a little bit faster. He's expecting the Inferno Tower to win that, and it didn't. We can go for a Lumberjack. The Giant Skeleton, let's go, baby! Come on! You are broken for a reason. This is why Clash Royale didn't nerf you. For me to win that game. My goodness. <laughs> I cannot believe how dumb this deck is, and it is so much fun to play. People don't expect it, and when they don't, there's a bomb in their face blowing everything up. All right, we got a game against SJ. So first things first with this deck, we do not want to make the big play at the start. We want our opponent to crusade into us, giving us the positive elixir trades. So I'm just going to let him do that. I'm going to wait until double elixir and then potentially collect a great matchup for me. 
No, right after I said that, he cycles a skeleton army in the back. Why can I be so ruthless, man? So skeleton army is going to be cycled. That means I'm going to go baby dragon and then he's got boulders. So this is probably a graveyard deck. I can't take any chances though. If I cycle my electro dragon, there's a high probability for our opponent just whipping out some random mid ladder deck with lumberjack, balloon freeze. And then I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I have tornado, but I don't have anything to stop the rest of your spam. Wait, this is really good for us because I think the boulder is going to get reset on top of the, the bar barrel unless the electro dragon doesn't want it to his job okay this is still fine i could have also activated king tower there but then i would have spent more elixir so i decided not to but the electric dragon counter pushing i think it's in my best interest to go for a lumberjack so we can rage it up and then cycle back to our golem if we need to drop it like i don't know do i want to cycle my golem in the back is that the play the electric dragon is going to force out some extra elixir or he's going to activate king tower and make me feel like a fool Okay, fortunately, he cycled bats and got nothing from it. I'll take that trade for sure. And with the bats out of cycle, we're going to be up elixir. I can go for a golem in the back and feel very comfortable about this decision. Usually, you can't do this in single elixir, but when your opponent is down that insane amount of elixir, he was literally chilling there, and we were at five elixir with a golem before he was able to cycle anything in the back. So he was down a ton. Maybe we can go in for a cannon card here. He's definitely going to all in me, but since I have Electro Dragon, that should be able to clean up the rest of our opponent's stuff. Also, I love that, you know, cannon card and then giant skeleton. They don't get knocked back that well by bowlers. So, you know, compared to like the leap barbarians that I typically run, this deck just feels way more sturdy. Oh my gosh, the tornado with the cannon card completely killed everything that he has. Now he has nothing on the golem. Wait, what is he supposed to do? I'm wondering right now. <laughs> this feels extremely chaotic for every opponent to deal with because... If you think about it, giant skeletons that are raged up as well by the Lumberjack too in the late game. Oh, it's going to be so toxic. I want to go in for another Golem because I want to prevent him from going all in on me. I want him to always be, you know, dealing with my big Golem pushes. Okay, I should have defended that with like a Lumberjack. I think that, that giant does take tower. Oh, why? You're graveyarding too? You are really wild, man. I'm 100% bar barreling here and then I can tornado on the skeletons. I don't know if that takes my tower anymore. No, it doesn't. He has to drop more elixir. Okay, this is hilarious. 29 HP. Not dead. We'll take it. This is fine. Maybe I can go in for like a cannon cart here. And with the baby dragon and lumberjack, he might even forget. You know what? I'm on a mission to make this man forget. Please, just keep focusing on defending. Don't arrow my tower. No! People say giant graveyard players aren't smart. He remembered. I'm disappointed. You've been lying about me the entire life, guys. I, you got been telling me secrets, and I thought that they were the pathway to success. Oh my gosh. Just try to make them forget, and I put so much on his mind, but this man, he didn't care. All right, I'm going to go in for a baby dragon, a barb barrel, and then a tornado and pull everything back so then he's not able to get the giant onto my tower. And with the golem locked and loaded, there's no way he's stopping that. Honestly, if you kill the golem, you die faster because the death damage finishes you off. So I don't know what you were trying to accomplish there. You should have skeleton armied in the pocket and prayed. But instead, we prayed on your tower. I guess golem is the ultimate predator devouring giant graveyard. After that juicy win against Giant Graveyard, now we're 8,300 in the world. So this guy is above 7,000 trophies. We gotta win this match to hit 7,000 ourselves. If I go for Cannon Cart in the back, I feel like that's, you know, a respectable play. But with this deck, you always want to wait for your opponent to make the first play since all of your cost of your cards are four Elixir or more besides like the Barb and the Tornado. And you don't really want to cycle those too often because if your opponent spreads you thin and you don't have Elixir to defend in single Elixir, you're just going to lose the game. And it happens very easily when you have like... Four Elixir Baby Dragons, six Elixir Giant Skeletons, eight Elixir Golems. It just doesn't work out very well. My favorite thing with this deck, by the way, is to bait out my opponent's Fishermen and then make them feel like they can cycle the Fishermen at points that they shouldn't. And they'll be like, wait, I already saw the Giant Skeleton cycle. Then they'll drop it in the back and then you go and yoink the Golem directly towards their tower. It's so fun to do that. Anyway, this guy is randomly cycling stuff he shouldn't. So the Skeleton Army makes sense a lot. But at the same time, I don't think you can get away with the Skeleton King ability because it's going to go right into a Cannon Cart and Electric Dragon and both of our towers, by the way. If he's even able to click it because the Electric Dragon is resetting it. Okay, he was able to. Well played, well played. But it was a stupid decision, so I don't know if I should have said well played. You know, even good players make bad choices, and that one, uh, he definitely messed that one up. He's going to Fireball in the Cannon Cart. Oh, his piggy screwed him over. That's hilarious. I don't know if you guys saw that, but... Oh my gosh, wait, wait, wait. We're going to pull that to the other side so then the cannon cart can lock on the tower without the fisherman? No, I saved it. I thought the fisherman was going to go and pull the cannon cart last second. 
or go and yoink itself onto the cannon cart. So I wanted to make sure that the cannon cart had a clear pathway towards the tower. Man, that did not work out well. Great pullback from our opponent last second on the cannon cart to make sure that it didn't lock onto the tower for the last duration. Because if it let, if it dies on the tower and it dies like locking onto the tower, it's going to stay there and you can't push it back because it's a building then. So it's really smart and well played on him. Maybe he's going to go in for a lightning on top of the Electro Dragon. It doesn't matter. The main thing for us is just to go same side, go and cycle our giant skeletons and okay, never mind. I'm going to go and cycle air cards because you can't kill them. That's, that's way better. I'll take that trade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can go for giant skeletons, electro dragons, baby dragons, and cannon cards. I don't even know if he gets a hit. No, he doesn't. He gets nothing from that. Oh my gosh. And he's pointed closer to his units. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. This is incredibly good for us. I can go for another cannon card, and then I can go tornado if I need to. But, I mean, do I want to? I have two cannon cards on the map, and I don't even have clone, bro. You can't put this into piggies. It's going to stay alive, bro. Yes, sir. We're in a barbarian here. I don't think this is like exceptionally worth it, but it's still funny because the barbarian's getting tanked for, so he's going to have to go in for a log. Really good stuff because if he goes other side, that's the side that we want to go for anyway. So, I mean, it works for me. I think he's going to try to go for a fisherman and try to pull the golem directly to the king tower. So that's what I'm expecting him to do. I'm going to save my tornado and mess it up. So then the golem's going to go directly towards the tower and lose him the game. That's the game plan right now. We'll see how well it works. I'm going to always save enough elixir for the tornado. He's just overcommitting like hardcore on the right-hand side. So we know he's going to go for the tornado. So I'm going to go in for a bar barrel here. I'm going to get ready with the tornado when he goes in for the fisherman. If he doesn't, okay, yeah, we can tornado on the fisherman and we can tornado on the skeletons. And we messed up the tornado. The golem's going to go on the tower. The lumberjack goes on the tower and then he's going to fall down. Dude, it's just like Jenga. We're taking everything, bro. Peace out. You crumbled real quick whenever you rely heavily on a fisherman and we have tornado or zap. We're going to mess it up every single time. So after that win, I think we're above 7,000 trophies and we have not lost the game with this deck yet. It is incredible how successful this is. And it's fun to see the trophies continue to stockpile up. That brings us to 6,400 in the world. So already one, two, three, four, five, six wins in a row. Let's see if we can keep it up. All right, let's see if we can keep up our dominant streak. Six wins in a row. I feel like we can get seven out here. I want to go gold in the back, but I know that it's a risky play. So I'm kind of just waiting for my opponent to make the first play. You guys already know the deal with this deck. You wait till double and then you dominate. And if this guy drops something immediately after, I'm going to be a sad sir. All right, so it looks like this guy isn't going to do anything either. I'm going to go for a Barbarian Barrel, and we'll see what's cooking. We want you to cycle some stuff so we can get some Paws Elixir Traits and then eventually drop our Golem. It's not safe for us to drop our Golem because I don't know what the heck you have, man. I think the Cannon Card's going to kill everything. So I'll Baby Dragon in the back, and he's got Baby Dragon. No, this is definitely an Electro Giant or Golem deck from our opponent. So in either situation, we just want to go in for a Giant Skeleton and Electro Dragon the same side as him, wait for him to mess up, and then bombard him with some shenanigans. You know what? He's got a cannon, so this is definitely an Electro Giant. Yeah. Here's the thing about Electro Giant. It kills all of my supporting cards really well, besides Cannon Cart and Giant Skeleton. And fortunately, those are the two that I have in my card cycle. Oh my gosh. You're a dirty person for doing that, bro. I don't like you. I really don't like you. This is likely going to be a loss, but we'll see if we can pull it out. I'm going to go Electro Dragon here and try to chain onto all of his junk. And then maybe the Cannon Cart's going to be able to pull the Electro Giants? He's going to Lightning on that, and he doesn't hit the Cannon Cart. That's dope. I can also go in for a Lumberjack afterward. I mean, here's the good thing about this. There's only one good piece of news. Giant Skeleton is fundamentally unfair. It doesn't die, even to mirrored up Electro Giants. I think the Baby Dragon might tank, or the Giant Skeleton is going to force out more Elixir. Okay. Not exactly the way that we want to play, but it is what it ever. It is how we're playing today. Giant Skeleton just killed the Electro Giant. <laughs> Kill the other Giant. Claim your Supremacy. Okay, I need to go in for a golem, but I can't afford to because the baby dragon is going to kill everything. So I'm going to go in for a tornado here. If he drops anything nearby, that would be awesome. Yeah, we're just going to go and tornado everything together so Electro Dragon is able to kill it. And then with the bomb, we're going to be able to kill that as well. Nice. He goes in for a golem. Yeah, I don't think he's supposed to go in for the cannon. Sorry. So then we can go in for our golem. And I think he overcommitted a little bit. If we're able to defend this, we win the game. So that's what we're going for. If he tornadoes the cannon cart into the Electro Giant then it's a bad play because then the Electro Giant's just going to lock onto that instead of my tower. But if he doesn't, I think he's in a bad spot as well. Okay, so he dropped it at a really good time, to be honest. Maybe we can tornado this. Okay, yeah, we're in a tornado. Lumberjack is able to lock. And I think that the Electro Dragon's just going to continuously chain onto his tower. What is happening here? He has to lightning that. He didn't lightning that. It's forever. 
You also tornadoed at a really good time, so then the cannon cart would die near my tower, but the Electro Giant wouldn't lock onto it. So that was pretty impressive, to be honest. All right, we're gonna go for a Bar Barrel here. I'm gonna go for an Electro Giant counter with Electro Dragon and then tornado everything together. Do I go in for another Giant Skeleton at the river? Because remember, he has to Lightning these. He always has to Lightning this Dragon. If he doesn't, he's screwed. I'm gonna go for a high Cannon Cart so then he can't uh, get as much value here. I'm gonna go for Baby Dragon. He's just gonna continuously spam this card because it's broken. Um, I need a tornado, but at the same time, if I do, I think I'm screwed. No, no, I'm not going to tornado. I'm going to tornado on offense because I need to be able to get damage with the Electro Dragon. Because he's going to lightning on my tower, so I have to get this damage now. He's going to lightning on me any second, but the Electro Dragon will chain onto his tower. Let's go! So your lightning damage is just futile. It's not going to matter. Let's go, guys. That's what I'm talking about. Beating the disgusting and dirty E-Giant player. Simply because I saved my tornado on offense. That was the nail in the coffin. Yet again, yet another win, and we are just crushing people today, currently at 5,500. We got another one against Mr. Muhammad, so you guys know the deal. This deck is all about counter pushing, so we're not going to cycle anything until Double Elixir, and we're going to get a much better matchup advantage. No, why would you do that? I took my eyes off you for one second. I was ready to drink water out of my pristine moose cup, and you ruined it, bro. You just don't care about the wildlife out here, bro. You're too wild for me. I'm going to Giant Skeleton. We're able to full counter that, not have to worry about it at all. Here's a good thing, though. My stuff's going to get raged up. It's angry right now. It's angry for the meese, for the moose. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I want to tornado this so bad, but I know it's the wrong play. The Giant Skeleton's on the tower. I don't think you're stopping that, bro. I don't think you got tornado. I don't think you have the juice. I don't think you can pull that back. Wait. I'm going to tornado this because I'm so like convinced that the baby dragon counters the minion horde that I can tornado and activate king tower. That was awesome. Let's go. <laughs> Yo, he, uh, he really angered the wrong person today. Ran over his entire tower like a moose hit in a car, man. This thing is beefy. You can't mess with that. It's crushing you. Maybe you can go for like, I don't know, lumberjack in the back and just see what this guy's going to do because we can go in for like a giant skeleton as well on the left hand side. Here's the thing. I'm just going to go Giant Skeleton with the Lumberjack again. And I don't think he's back to Minion Horde. I think he's got to go Guards and then Minion Horde. And even if he does that, he's going to lose the tower to the Giant Skeleton because it's raged up. Oh, he's going to... Oh, okay. Well, I guess I do this. And then the Cannon Cart locks onto your tower. And then maybe maybe we can pull everything into the bombs. Get out the way. Get out the way. Still. Oh, no. That was, that was optimistic. I was way too optimistic there. But the, the one thing that doesn't matter is like... The fact that he's getting counter push into a uh, king tower so we'll take it you know i shut this all down i don't take much damage and playing against a three musketeer deck without any way of killing the three musketeers that's what i just realized i have literally nothing in my deck to kill the three musketeers i don't have lightning i don't have fireball this is the matchup that you never wanted to see but it still might be good for me if i outplay him that's what we're gonna roll with if he goes like minion horde and we tornado it with electro dragon we can still win this one i think I'm going to do this. I'm going to Barb Barrel, and then I think that we're able to kill the Musketeer, and then hopefully keep the Electro Dragon alive, and if we don't, we're screwed. All right, we're going to do this, and then the Golem will pop onto the, the Muskies, and then he's going to keep everything alive because this matchup is so bad for me. <laughs> Yo, Clash Rail, just let me win this game real quick, real quick. He's going to go three Musketeers again in the back, and I can maybe go in for an Electro Dragon and then go Cannon Card or Giant Skeleton, to be honest. I kind of want a Giant Skeleton, but I know I need to go and defend the left-hand side. He's all inning me, though. I don't think that's the right decision on his end. Because the Giant Skeleton is able to kill all of his junk. The two Musketeers will get cleaned up by a Bar Barrel. So I'm okay here for right now. For right now. Simply because he doesn't have any real way of pushing me. He can't go in for, like, a Minion Horde here because he doesn't have Miner. Pull this in. Maybe we can win. Oh my gosh, that worked. Kind of. Not really, but kind of, right? Okay, that's going to die, and we can go Golem at the river because he doesn't have Battle Ram and Cycle, so he can't pressure me that hard. What is he going to do? Is he going to Elixir Collector, or is he just going to Minion Horde and all in and pray? He's going to Minion Horde all in and pray. Hopefully, we can find a way. I mean, I can Bar Barrel here, and then I've got Tornado. I don't know if this is able to stop the, the guards. I think so. I think I beat three Musketeers despite not having a single big spell for the Elixir Collector. Wow, this guy definitely got outplayed there, and that feels fantastic. We are not taking losses today, and we're going to give him the Peace Out Girl Scout. So we're kind of tryharding on ladder, I guess, and I'm just going to show my battle log again. 
zero losses with this deck. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wins in a row, putting us at 5,000 in the world. No one can stop me. Nobody. Like, subscribe for more daily videos and have an amazing rest of your day.